things an aspirant aspirant must do when you are when you're aiming for 99th percentile what is the keyword or key thing to chase and i'm going to go for each section i'm going to give one keyword and so for quant it's tons of practice practice to the point of automating there are 34 questions in quant 23 or 24 will be uh, regular questions once you crack the method you know you look at this you crack one funda then you fall into a method one part of speed is going to be how much of the question do you read or how much do you process to fall into the method second step is going to be how quickly and how automatically on autopilot you can solve the mechanics of it that mechanical solving speed intensity and stamina super crucial so for quant funda is obviously important no doubt about it so that that's the hygiene factor if you're going for 99th percentile I'm, I'm i'm assuming you know your basic number theory and basic geometry and basic algebra and basic arithmetic so practice so much that you look at a question and say this template i've done i'm falling into the template so more than 50 percent of the questions will fall into default templates hit those templates you're good to go so practice is the keyword lrdi it's variety so LRD, I've seen several students say, I'm going to do seating arrangement puzzles. I'm going to do sequencing puzzles. I'm going to do uh, pie chart puzzles. Those are all plans for 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I, I, I've just finished the process of solving several of the sets for CAT 2020 LRD. because we're doing a bunch of videos. And I could simply not even categorize quite a few of them. You don't even, we're not even able to categorize it as DI and LR. So it's just a, an unusual sounding different puzzle. So how do you prepare for that? Do several unusual sounding different puzzles. LRDI, the first word is variety. VRC. VRC, the, the key thing I would look at, the key point I would look at is accuracy. For preparation, it is reading. For last mile practice, it is accuracy. Several students, I find that they, they get go wrong in that one and two choices. They finally miss out on that one and two. And then they tell themselves, look, I tried 10 questions, four, five went my way, five didn't go my way. This always happens. I'll take the next mock. Not five your way, five the other way. All 10 of the correct answers are the only correct answers. You have missed five because you have missed a point. Go through the solution and say, hey, I mark C. The right answer says B. The guy has given a reason why C is not right. Let me look at that reason and tell myself, okay, I'm going to look out for this reason. Something is being exaggerated. Something is being extrapolated from what is being told. This is not completely accurate. I should be looking out for this trap. I'll be careful from now on. Plant that seed in your head. Be anal about accuracy. Don't accept a lower accuracy bar for verbal as if it were Einstein. It is true. It is definitely true that BRC error rate will be higher than quant and LRDI for most students. That's all right. But the moment you say, okay, this is true, 70%, that's what it is. Without, without driving yourself to become more accurate, then the climb from 94 to 99, 99.5 becomes trickier. You've got to say it's an objective exam. Only one correct answer. I'm attempting 10. Why should I not get all 10 right? That should be their attitude as far as BRC analysis is concerned. Take your chances. But when you're analyzing, add those pointers. Overall, all put together for mocks, what is the word I would use? I would use discipline. So for mocks, you've got to have a schedule. You say every Sunday, 10 to 1, I'm taking a mock. That's what I do. What do you do Sunday, 10 to 1? Oh, it's 10 o'clock, I'm taking a mock. That's what I do. So hit that without fault every Sunday. You do it for four and a half months, you're waltzing into a good score. So make sure that uh, you, you know what you're chasing in each of those, each of those pitches.